good night and welcome to Hub City Deli that hosts every week the Jackson Christian Football Recap Show. I'm here, Coach Joe Holloway, along with Coach Brian Bullard, who is my co-host. He has gotten so good that we're going to put him in charge of a lot of things, but you still got time to come on down. We've got two famous athletes, and after last week's game, one of them that's a little younger than the other one, and we're going to keep them keep them quiet who we got but we've got special people here tonight and uh, we kind of reverse roles on a couple of things but hub city deli the featured sandwich is the smash burger again i'm waiting for the piggy sue to come back <laughs> i eat the brisket my good friend uh bass eats the brisket he, he loves that we've come out here and eaten before and but there's so many other things hub city deli pleasant plains extended just down from jackson christian school you know what you can do uh, on a normal night when we're home, now we got to travel this week, but when you're at home, you can come by here and grab your sandwich and come over and watch the best football team around here. And I do say that. Coach, we're not going to waste any time. We had a had a big win, and we'll talk about that, but you need to introduce our first special guest tonight. Well, we are, Coach. We're thankful and, and blessed to have uh, Coach Darby Palmer back with us tonight. He was on the show, um, our kickoff show that we started, um, this first one here at Hub City, and um, he's let his, his assistants come on, and um, really, he he asked me. He said, "Do you do you want me to come?" I said, "That that's if you want to come." So he was happy to be here tonight, and we're we're happy to have him with us and talk about a big win over over a rival, um, and and kind of hit on what our guys did and and how they performed on Friday night, and then look look to this week um, to close out the regular season as well. Yeah, you're right about that, and of course, the coach, I'm going to put a little pressure on you. You've got two special guests <laughs> over to your, but they're enjoying the great food here, but you need to tell everybody who they are. Yes, sir. I got my wife, Katie, and then my son, Hayden, right over here, so I'm sure you may be able to hear him <laughs> here in a little bit once well, he recognizes me over here. Well, he wanted to be interviewed a while ago. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm jealous that hair he's got. If I had had that good-looking haircut and that hair that he's got, uh, every girl in school when I was a high Uh-oh. schooler would have wanted to Uh-oh. go yes, out with sir. me. He is going to be the women's pet and the men's regret. There right? we go. And uh, anyway, and of course, for the ones that don't know Coach Palmer, he was a great football player. And don't let him tell you otherwise because he got hit quite a bit playing center and snapping those long snaps and stuff. And that's the reason, we, Coach, we appreciate, and I know you do, Walker Ray, the Swiss Army knife. He does everything. He does everything for us. He's a great player, hard worker. Uh, and he brings it every day in practice, but he's able to do just about anything. And we plug him around several positions defensively, offensively. If there's a guy that's, that's injured and can't go this week, we've had him at multiple positions offensively outside of his role. So he does a great job for us. He really does. And I, I'm going to put the B on both of y'all right now before we go in and some important things. And we need to thank Chase McLean. He does such a great job over at Jackson Christian. But, you know, everybody does. I, I've heard the young men talk about the faculty and the teaching and the instruction. And if you want to go to a good place, uh, Jackson Christian is. It's not just the academics, but we have uh, classes that teach Old Testament, New Testament. We teach you how to live. But you know what I've noticed, and I've been around a long time since the school opened up, Jackson Christian graduates are successful. They are all successful, not just one or two, not just 15 or 20, but you're going to find some of the most successful people in this town. Some have moved off, but you still hear about them. The school is successful, and, of course, the football program, we can go to new heights every week. How many wins, Coach, now for the total program? The, on our notes, we got – that's our 200th win, Coach, on yeah. Friday that we picked up. So that was a big a big win for Jackson Christian and a testament to all the players and coaches and, and staff that have come before us. So we're just trying to keep that tradition going. Absolutely. I know Brian Stewart still keeps up with things over here every once in a while. Uh, somebody or I'll have contact and I say, Eric Cohew. Now, I hadn't had contact with him, but I understand he still keeps up with things. And these are people that the history of the program is important, and we'll talk about that. But something that since we're talking about it, I'll let both of you expound on this, 17-9 and nine against TCA. That is something else because, let's be honest, they've had a player that played at Alabama. They've had some good players. We've had some good players. But we hold a, a big edge, 17-9. to nine. Yes, sir. And Coach Butler does an outstanding job at, at TCA getting his players ready. And our guys were mentally focused all week, and we won that practice Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday of last week just mentally preparing for them. 
But let's talk about this past game. It was an important one. It meant a lot to us. And then we'll ex- let you all explain about the playoffs. We go into that game. Should be the favored team. But with TCA and Jackson Christian, you throw the record books out. And you better come and you better have that chin strap buckled up. And you better be ready to play. And if you lose focus. But we got the football. They helped us out. They they gave us the opening kickoff. And I know you like that. And I did have a fan uh, ask me the other night. They wanted you to explain tonight why you like to take the opening kickoff. I know, but that's not for me. But you two gentlemen go ahead and talk about a big win. And we went from the get-go on that one. Yes, sir. We like getting the ball first to to set a tone of physical football. Our guys have really bought into a physical mentality, and we practice that every day in in how we do things and drill work, group work, and team setting. So our guys are excited when we get the ball first to go out and set the tone. And I'll I'll echo that. I'm kind of the guy that stands by our guys before we run out from the cheerleaders to make sure that we don't stay over there for 30 minutes and get a penalty <laughs> and all those things. And when we get the football, there is genuine excitement um, from those guys because they do want it first. And those old, those offensive linemen are ready. And against a team uh, like TCA that, that we've, you know, they ha- they've got us coached the last couple times. And, and we wanted to, to come out and, and kind of set the tone right away. And that's what we did with Cam and Campbell and completing a couple passes and then uh, Campbell finishing it off in the end zone. Well, since we you've used those words, Coach, we've got two of the most electrifying players from the other night's game, and one has gotten healthier and better each week. The other one uh, has been the superstar of rent a car anyway and can rearrange your bones, be an unlicensed chiropractor and a few other things <laughs> like that. But, uh, you know, we've got two of them. We want you to hang around. I'm going to let Coach introduce them in a minute, but – uh, you probably figured out because I've used the term unlicensed chiropractor before, but the other young man has made a great comeback from some injuries. And uh, we had a good night. Our linebackers, I believe, had 15 total tackles. Mm-hmm. I think Chance led them with eight. Mm-hmm. And I believe that Na- attacker Nash had uh, six solos and one assist. That's seven. So that's a pretty good night's work out of your two inside linebackers. And then Wyatt Jones, and, and we'll let y'all talk about the front line. I'm not neglecting them, but linebackers had a big night the other oh, night. Oh, absolutely. And, it, and it's a testament to our D-line because our D-line does a great job soaking up those double teams and letting our linebackers fly around and make plays for us. And, and they enjoy that. They celebrate those guys making the plays. Um, I believe our defense held TCA to, to under 100 yards rushing, maybe 80 yards uh, rushing on the night. And, and Coach Phillips has that side of the ball playing extremely well right now. I believe they only had, what, 38 in the first half. Yeah. And we set the tone in the first. And that defensive line, Coach, you've got to say something about them because you're right, they took on double teams. But we had good penetration the other night. Plus, Caleb Newson, you better not run away from him. He'll chase you down. The one thing that, that we've really been – um, wanting out of our defensive line, they've been we've been pretty good against the run, but when when quarterbacks drop back, we we haven't really been getting home and, and getting our sacks and finishing the play. And I think we ended up with two sacks the other night, um, and Chilton and Carson got there together one time, and I think maybe Caleb had had the other one. But we got really good pressure, and if you noticed, we were getting a lot of pressure from Cedric pushing his guy and pushing the pocket. Plus, our guys staying on the edge like they're supposed to, and really wasn't anywhere for the quarterback to step up to. So we were—I was proud of that because you—you you want to find something you can push them with, and that's been—we've been close, but we just haven't been able to get those sacks and, and complete the the play when when we've had those opportunities. But uh, proud of those guys. Proud, proud of the way Chilton Smith played, and he was on last week uh, with us, and he is a kid that just—you don't hear him, you you don't notice him. Um, but he just goes out, and week after week, he's done his job, and now he's starting to get a little bit of a um, little bit more to him, and a little bit more technique, and using his hands, um, and was very proud of him, very proud of Caleb turning the edge, um, and, and getting that tote pointed towards the quarterback, and and working those things. And Coach Gillum does an excellent job, and I wish we could get him on. He works um, as as a cop at night, and he's a he's a technician with the hands and with the with the feet and I just do I'm I'm there just to make sure that everybody hopefully gets lined up right or well, maybe um, one Saturday he can call the Saturday sports roundup because he deserves credit for that I got a credit a young man 
Aiden, and he came off the bench, and y'all put him in in some key situations. Mm -hmm. And I don't think he got any sacks, but he had some hurries that he mm -hmm. caught, and he filled his gap. And part of our defense, you must keep yeah. the blockers off of our linebackers. Absolutely. Yeah. Aiden Childress did a, did a great job plug and play for us, especially on the line. We had a sub come out. We had to put him in, and he stepped up and played great. That's a testament to our whole team this whole year. You know, we only brought back one starter offensively, three starters defensively, and our and you can tell week to week they've gained more and more confidence in, in themselves, what we're doing, and it goes back to what we tell them every day in practice: trust the offense, trust the defense, trust your teammates. Own your one eleventh of the field, and each week they've gotten better doing it. And we haven't peaked yet as a team, which is very exciting. That is exciting, and I want you all to tell the people. How many underclassmen we've got playing? This is not – last year we well, had an all-senior yeah. offensive line. That's what I was going to talk about, too. I don't want to keep going and mention all those guys in the D-line and not mention Sky State, who's a freshman that has um, bought into his role and he's going to come and spell Chilton. But also we've been able to play him at nose. And on Friday, Coach, he got some work. Um, I don't know if we noticed or not at the at the four technique, four high technique position that Carson plays because Carson plays so hard. And getting him off the field sometimes is not easy. He doesn't like it. But um, we asked Scott to go in there and play inside, which is not his natural position. But you, you couldn't tell he was out there, and that's a great thing. Um, he did some great things as well. And I think the week before against FACS, he, he was near a sack and kind of overran the quarterback. And yes, so he, he was frustrated with that. But he's a guy that's, that's filling in for us. To have too deep of guys you can trust – um, is a big thing, and and we're you know we know we got said we know we got Carson we know Chill's going to be there, but having those guys behind them is tremendous, especially with some of the O line injuries we've had to kind of maneuver um, when guys get thrown in, and we we want to try to rest guys as much as possible because I think we've worn some teams down in the third and fourth quarter, and that's a that's a big thing that not everybody has. Yes, we have. You're here on the recap show, Jackson Christian Football Recap Show at Hub City Deli. Our of course, Coach Bullard is my co-host every week. Coach Darby Palmer's in here. Gentlemen, we've got more depth than I can remember in a long time at Jackson Christian. I've been around and watched games and seen it. Uh, this is, Darby, since you've been here, best depth you've had, right? Oh, absolutely, 100%. It's a testament to our guys and how they work. Um, we like to sub a lot of guys in, get them that experience, and, and you can tell it's paid off as the year goes. And then we've got a good eighth grade team coming up. We want to thank – and please tell them who the coaches were of the middle school. And they did a great job. And we've got some young men that have already come up to the varsity. The rest of them will come up next year to it. And we've got some JV games that we played. And we need to fill folks in before we take our first break. Absolutely. Coach Wyatt was a new coach to our staff this year. He did an outstanding job with Coach Ray, Coach Lumley. Um, they did a great job getting those guys prepared, teaching them kind of how we run things offensively and defensively at the high school level, introducing them to concepts. And we think that that has paid off down the road too, those guys being introduced to those concepts early. Uh, but we're super excited about our eighth grade class that's coming up. we got a lot of guys that are going to be able to play early. Hit on the all-star game um, yes. that they're going to be playing in because I don't have a lot of info on that. And let's recognize them for that as well. Absolutely. we have. There's two all-star games going on in town. Uh, some of our athletes aren't going to be able to play in it due to basketball and them playing basketball and being on the basketball team. But we have several of our eighth grade athletes being recognized going to be in both those all-star Yeah, that's teams. the one at West Carroll, right? West Carroll, and there's one at uh, Trinity this year as well. Okay, there is. so there's a middle school so all-star game. Wow, I did not know about the one at Trinity. Knew about the one at West Carroll. Those people are always very kind about keeping us informed. And then we've got – Two all-stars for the high school game, I've been told. Mm -hmm. It's December 10th, West Tennessee Healthcare. Yes, It'll be played at uh, USJ. Yes, sir, it will. Uh, that's Tacker Nash and Walker Ray. Uh, two outstanding young men, two of the leaders, and you're going to hear from uh, Tacker Nash later. And, of course, I'm excited also about Cooper Banky being Absolutely. here tonight. Before we go uh, uh, to take that first break, anything you, you want to say, Coach, for, about those I, two I would, gentlemen? I would love to it talk about Tacker and, and Coop. Tacker's done a great job defensively for us. He, he got voted a captain. Uh, he's a great leader, great vocal leader in the locker room. Um, but Cooper Banky, Cooper Banky's a guy that, that we pegged coming in early that was going to be a, a big player for us. Unfortunately, he got injured and was sidelined for a few weeks. Um, he could have gotten negative about it. He could have dropped his head a little bit. 
but he kept working on and off the field to get back healthy. And you're starting to see a healthy Cooper Banky on the field, and he's done a great job in the run game and passing game for us. And he and a young man named Lance Rowland were both going to help. Lance had an unusual accident with – uh, golf cart and he wasn't driving it I'm going to defend Lance on that one but it is very unusual and uh, just because I saw a spark out of both young men over at the ECS game mm -hmm. yeah we got three plays really I don't want to say cost us that game but if we get a call and a couple of plays turn out like we normally do that's a seven nothing ball game or either we've put some points on the board and uh, I still think Gage scored. Uh, <laughs> that's my thoughts. That's uh, the coaches right. don't have to come in, but I think he scored. But I will say my famous phrase, we were in Memphis, and unfortunately the replay, we didn't have a camera right on the goal line. We had other cameras, but that would uh, – anything that we need to talk about, and we'll take a break, and the coaches will be back with us because we got to talk about next week's game. And we've got so much important information that we need to talk about, but – um, including getting the Jackson Christian Player of the Week. Mm -hmm. And um, I do have to ask you this before we take that break. Jalen told me when he was here two weeks ago that he was a quarterback <laughs> or could be if you needed him. And I think he is as pleased with that pass that he threw. And he actually did a good job going to his left. Oh, uh, yeah. He, he may – be trying to give away too many of our secrets. I think we got a few sets for him that that he'll like and and that we've been working on. He thinks he's Mike Vick now. Yeah. Oh yeah. yes, yeah. he does. You've Got to get us a left-handed quarterback in there. He thinks he's Mike Vick, and, and but folks, he did do a good job. Yeah, and he was entertaining when he was here too, even oh, off air and on air. A young man, just a freshman, very articulate for a freshman. We're going to take a two-minute timeout. We're at Hub City Daily. You're listening to the Jackson Christian Football Recap Show. We'll be back with coaches and players after this two-minute timeout. 27 years ago, a vision became a reality, and Snookum Steakhouse officially opened. We cut our steaks in-house, and our ribeyes are full of flavor. The steak trimmings are used to make our certified Angus Beef Steak Burgers, so when you order at Snookum's, you are getting high quality. Enjoy our salad bar and mini dessert. Also try our famous family recipe, the Pink Lush Fruit Salad. Come visit Snookum Steakhouse in Henderson, Tennessee. We are open evenings Tuesday through Saturday, but closed Sunday to Monday. Snookum Steakhouse, come taste the difference. Great American Sports, make sports an addiction. Located at 125B Old Hickory Boulevard, East in Jackson, we specialize in teen sports for youth leagues, schools, and churches. We can embroider and screen print team uniforms. We also have sports equipment, Under Armour and Adidas clothing, and anything else you need for your team sports. You can email or call us for all your team sports needs. Great American Sports, make sports an addiction. This could be a true story. On October 3rd, a 2003 hatchback struck and killed a deer that goes by the name Buck. I know, right? He now has Buck's head proudly displayed on his living room wall. He tells a different story. Shot it. No, he didn't. And to hide his lie, he took his car to Mitchell's body shop. No, I didn't. Yes, he did. And lucky for him, they made it look good as new. And as for Buck, the story continues. Hello folks, this is Gary Deaton, right here at Deaton's Carpet One. I want to let you know we've been in business for 48 years. Here's what I believe has made the difference. Our lifetime labor warrant on everything we install. Our healthy living installation, bacteria and germs cannot survive in our new flooring. Our beautiful guarantee, if you don't just love it, we'll replace it. It will make your flooring experience priceless. We're located on Freedom Highway, 1000 Highway 45 Bypass in good old Jackson, Tennessee. Welcome back to the Jackson Christian Football Recap Show. We're here at Hub City Deli on Pleasant Plains Extended. You can't miss it when you come down. One of the things I've meant to talk about, there are some great half sandwich options where uh, you can get the turkey, avocado, uh, classic BLT, PBLT, etc. They've got soup, they've got salad, and they've got more what they call craft sandwiches, deli sandwiches, than you can shake a stick at. Jimmy Carter doesn't have that many peanuts on his farm <laughs> as they do the number of sandwiches. 
And, of course, alongside of me, a, a brilliant co-host in his own right. And one of these days he ought to just take the show over and do it himself because he's good. He can hit a baseball. He can play football. I bet he can play a little basketball, too, because I know he's coached it. But we're going to turn it over to Coach Brian Bullard and let him introduce our first very special guest. Coach, we have Cooper Banky with us tonight, um, junior receiver for us. And, and Coach Palmer hit on it already, but I'm going to hit on it again. Um, Coop's a guy that – played behind a, a pretty pretty good receiving core last year, uh, seniors. And so he got to learn, and he was a guy that we saw in JV games and saw really good um, flashes and really good moments in the JV games. And we knew coming into this year, you lose three seniors, um, three senior receivers, that Coop was a guy that was going to have to step up for us. And he was really, really having a great game against a really good Briarcrest team. And that, that looks even better now with the year that they're having. Um, Coach Stewart and those guys, but you know he gets a high ankle sprain in that one, and you know how those are. They're, they're that's almost worse sometimes than than a fracture because you just don't know when it's going to be ready. And he he rehabbed and he worked and he 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 wanted to be out there, and when then he he got back healthy for us and he has been tremendous. Um, in the FACS game, scored a touchdown. Uh, last week, scored another touchdown on the ground and. Um, he's just a weapon, and the way we run our offense and the motions and, and getting guys um, different touches and different looks, he has been um, a shot in the arm for us. Uh, Cam, Cam's been banged up just a little bit. Uh, Campbell goes both ways, and so to, and Jay gets tired going both ways as well. So to bring Cooper in fresh um, and getting those reps is another weapon that, that is going to be big for us going forward, and he, he does whatever you ask him to do. He'll run it. He'll catch it. Um, and, and so that's um, – we wanted to get him on the show, um, especially with the success he's had the last couple of weeks for us. And he has had some success. And um, I'll talk to him about some things that maybe helped with that success a little later. But, Cooper, how long have you been at Jackson Christian School? Uh, probably since early kindergarten. Kindergarten. That's, yeah. And that's the way to go. You need to start a great place to be. And uh, any quick memories of – elementary school or middle school come back to him. Of course, he's a young man. He's not a senior, folks. We're going to have him back next year. Uh, Not anything that's too crazy. But uh, other than playing middle school football and elementary football. Uh, what other sports do you play? Just football. Just and football. Now, I heard you were a baseball player at one time. Uh, in middle school. Yeah, okay. For one year. Well, now, he's smiling, folks, and he's got one of those award-winning smiles and stuff. Now, you're being modest. You were you were better, but you're really focused on your football, aren't you? Yes, sir. Any aspirations for after Jackson Christian School, maybe playing football at the next level somewhere? Maybe, but as of right now, I'm just focused on high school. Just focusing on high school, and we've got a good team. Do you enjoy the camaraderie at the, at the football games and practice, too? Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Fun group that you're with, isn't it? Yes, and, sir. The uh, y'all have had some big victories, and I think this completes for the seniors the cycle. They have beaten everybody that's on the schedule as far as regular teams that were traditional rivals and all that. And uh, TCA was the last game that we needed to compete. That do you feel good for your seniors when they something good like that happens? Oh, absolutely, for them? yeah. Now let's talk about school. Uh, what's your favorite subject at school? Probably history. History. Mm -hmm. Now, you can't use the coaches because we've ruled them out. And who's your favorite teacher at school? And matter of fact, in your case, since you've been at school, if you've got three, like you had an elementary school, a middle school, we, we need to mention those people. Whose class do you really enjoy? Uh, Miss Fran Baker. She's my history teacher. I really enjoy her class. We get that a lot. Math and history get a lot of things that way. And uh, uh, the it, we talk about lunches and food sometimes. First of all, Overall, what's your favorite food, whether it's here, whether it's at school, cafeteria? Um, uh, school, probably Crispitos, and like anywhere else, probably pizza. Well, I'm, I'm keeping notes on that. Crispitos is, is Coach, leading. Though, yeah. Yeah. I've got to come and eat because everybody tells me the food's great, and I think you can tell I don't miss many, <laughs> many meals and stuff. What about out in, in public? Uh, is it pizza? Or yeah, is it? it's probably like pizza and chicken tenders. <laughs> Chicken tenders. Oh, me. We won't ask you who's got, got your most favorite chicken tenders. But the uh, favorite drill when you're, you're playing, everybody's got a favorite drill. And uh, I'll give you an example. And some of the older kids, had a, had a, they got to listen to other people and hear the questions before you did. But 
Uh, my favorite drill is when we punted the football towards the locker room and re- ran to the locker room at the end of practice. Uh, but what's a better drill than uh, that one? My favorite is probably seven on seven. You like seven, then there's several people. Are, what do you really like? Are you like hitting people or you uh, like running away from them? I like them? running away from people <laughs> with the ball. And sometimes that's a good thing. Cooper is not the biggest guy in the world, <laughs> but his feet are very quick. He's got more moves than a hula girl <laughs> once he catches the ball and it turned into a runner the other night. You don't throw it like Jalen, do you? Uh, no, sir. <laughs> okay, I just, just wanted to make sure. The Think back over your football career, which is not over, but up to now, is there a special game, a special play, or any? Was your first touchdown that uh, your special play? It's yeah. your turn to probably the uh, touchdown against FCS for my first high school touchdown. It meant a lot. Okay, and the um, how far can we go? I'm not putting the B on you to, but how far can we go this year? Uh, state, we can win state. That's a good positive attitude. All of our young men and the camaraderie is good. The teamwork is good. The coaches have preached family, and you're seeing that right now. And, and that's not having a big head or anything like that. If these young men put their thing together, we can go a long way, can't we? Yes, sir. Now, after you get out of Jackson Christian, what, do you know your course of study for college? Uh, not yet, no. And it's keeping open. And a lot of people, you know, your freshman year, uh, I sometimes wish the college counselors would do a little bit better job not trying to – pinhole you or pigeonhole you into so you're going to keep the options wide open yes sir any particular field that for a job like i know some people want to be a dentist some want to be an oral surgeon others want to be engineers anything yet that's come to mind probably something related to sports still like sports riding or something like that journalism Journalism. I like this young man. That'd be awesome. Oh, you may not even have to come up here and be with Seabass and I or with Bill Hamilton and Jimmy on a Saturday. So, and we don't mind. Uh, Damari Wallace has visited us, the quarterback over at Northside, and we'd be glad to have you come sometime. The situation with football, you're going to focus. So I've got to ask about the weight program. Do you have fun lifting weights? Oh, I, oh yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Coach Allen's a fun guy, isn't he? Yes, sir. And that, that's one of those those great things that uh, that we've got. Now, goals for the rest of the year for you? I mean, just do it whatever the coach told me to do. Help my team out as best I can. Now, folks, that's the kind of attitude that, that you want to have and all that. Back, you're back with the school situation. Besides going to class, which uh, we've got some great teachers we enjoy, what's the fun activity that you like at Jackson Christian School? I mean, just going and getting a good education, a Christian environment. You like hanging out with your friends, too. You know, that's a good – because we've got a lot of nice people at the school and and take care of that. Now, would you rather the coaches give you a call, your number for a running play, or Uh, or would you rather catch a pass and take it for six? Well, I mean, it doesn't really matter as long as I get the ball, but probably run. I'm not going to lie. I really like running the ball. (laughs) Like running the football. Oh, we got to keep that catalog. Now – why do you wear 13? I uh, I was asked to ask you that. And this is a good Jackson Christian fan that wanted to know. Uh, I don't really know. I just, like, looked up to players and I felt like Odell, who wore number 13. Okay. I just liked it. it it's a, a good good number. And the uh, couple of, of final questions. If you weren't playing football, what would you be doing? Um, I might play basketball. I like playing basketball a lot, but I'm probably not getting enough to play for this school. Coach Kyle, are you listening? You may have <laughs> never say that. A young lady named Terry Nelson was a manager in junior high. She came over and she was my manager in high school. We got we had sickness hit us. The flu was bad that year. We had a bunch of injuries, and she had to scrimmage with us. And I one day I said, Terry, you are no longer a manager. You are a player. She is number two on the assist list at Northside right now, and I know we're not here to talk about Northside. I think you could do it. Do you believe? I mean, I guess so. Yes, sir. Now, Coach, you got a couple of questions for Cooper because he's answered the big one. That 13 one, there were uh, inquiring minds wanting to know about that one. Coop, give me some – give the people listening and maybe some younger folks that might be listening or go back and listen to the show um, some perspective of – how you handled the injury, um, how you handled what you thought was going to be a, a big year for you, what we thought was going to be a big year for you, what you were showing on the field, and then you had that setback. Tell us how you um, kept your, your perspective and, and were able to 
to answer the bell when you got back? Well, uh, it was a lot mentally at first. It, uh, it really took a toll on me, but, I mean, I just trust the process. And then as soon as I was able to come back on the field, I tried to give them all. And, and what he's saying is um, – and we knew. We knew Coop wanted to be out there and wanted to be contributing. And that's hard for a coach to – because you don't have a lot of answers. You just have to trust the rehab and the trainers and, um, you know, the healing process. And, and we are – we are thankful um, that he is, he is number 13 is back with us, and we're anxious to, to see what he can do and, and keep doing the expanded role. He's made my job excited. i got to ask him about this. You've got a good friend, Lance Rowland. Yes, sir. Do you two guys, and I already kind of know the answer to this, you two guys encourage each other, yes, sir. pick each other up when you're down, and you all have a real good relationship. You all yes, even sir. go to college football games together sometimes, don't you? I went to a Titans game this Sunday. Oh, the Titans. I knew it was something that was going to happen, and, uh, the, uh, but that's the kind of team we've got. But I know those two young men are very close. Who's the better golfer? Or do y'all even play golf or oh, yeah, golf we, with each other? We play golf. Uh, I would say probably me. <laughs> probably me. I think he'd probably say the same <laughs> thing. And um, it's good though to have friends like that. We have a tradition. It's your turn to say anything you want to. Not just the Jackson Christian fans, and but there are football fans. I know Moose Henry's listening up in Kingsport, Tennessee, right now. Mo Grimes, who's formerly a sports writer with the old Columbia Daily Herald, and Mo's retired, but he listens to these games, and he, he listens, and he was excited about your play the other night because uh, I got a call from him after the game. And You got anything to say to the football fans that uh, we've got? I'd say definitely come out of the game Friday against Fayette. I believe it's at Fayette, too. Mm-hmm. I hope he comes see us win. It is, uh, and we're going to give it a good effort. We always – uh, their coach has a little bit of a Jackson connection, and the coaches and I will talk about that. But uh, I don't have to worry about this. This young man is going to give us 100%, and he's going to come out and play hard. He plays smart, and he'll do all the right things. But I'm glad you're back in the high ankle sprain, Coach. You're right. It takes longer sometimes than a complete break of the yeah. ankle to heal those things. Yeah, I'm not noticing any limp or anything like that. You 100%. Yes, sir. <laughs> okay, so you could get out on the dance floor if you were dancing with the stars and handle that now. Yes, sir. <laughs> and he, he is a good and fine young man. Now, what about before you go, who are some people that have influenced your life and some sports heroes? Uh, my parents and my coaches, definitely. And sports heroes probably be Tom Brady. Tom Brady, a good one. But I like what you said about your parents and stuff. And, and Cooper's dad is, is here with him tonight. And, of course, we've got a great crowd. There's only one table that's even open right now. And we want you to come on down. Cooper, we've enjoyed it. Uh, it has been great. We're going to take a two-minute timeout. And when we come back to Hub City Deli, more of the Jackson Christian Football Recap Show. At Lonnie Kyle Ford, we now give you a warranty for life on the engine and transmission. That's right, a warranty for life at no cost to you. Unlimited time, unlimited mileage, but it's only at Lonnie Kyle Ford and Henderson, where cars really are cheaper in the country. Buying a car is all about you. In person, over the phone, or online, we make it simple and easy. Our place is yours, no matter where you live. LonnieKyleFord.com or Lonnie Kyle Ford and Henderson, where cars really are cheaper in the country. Welcome to Man's Record Service. We offer a wide array of services. We are dedicated towing professionals experienced in both simple and complicated towing services. We offer light and heavy-duty off-road recovery, auto and heavy-duty towing, load shift and load transfer capabilities, and much more. We are equipped to handle any situation, no matter how big or how small. Call today at 731-424-2173. We are a team, a team composed of highly skilled physical therapists with new school treatment approaches and old school customer service principles. We are a community presence because we know our foundation rests in relationship building and involvement. We are leaders in this industry and we're putting in time daily to develop that aspect of thinking. We're more than a business. We're a team composed of individuals governed by a set of core values. We're more than a physical therapy company. We're a movement in the profession. We are your premier physical therapy team in West Tennessee. 
Southern Family Dentistry's dental laser technology is a game changer for those who experience dental anxiety. Just imagine, no more drills. Look at some of Dr. Nathan Nash's patient results. We provide a relaxing environment to ensure a pleasant visit every time. From a simple cleaning to a full dental reconstruction. And now, prepless veneers. We're there when you need us. Dr. Nathan Nash will treat your family just like he wants his family treated. Check them out on Facebook to see all those loving smiles. Call 300-4545. Southern Family Dentistry, we want to make you smile. We are back at Hub City Deli for the Jackson Christian Football Recap Show. My co-host, Coach Brian Bullard, and in just a minute I will throw it to him, but come down to Hub City Deli. We've got the sandwiches, we've got the salads, the wraps. I forgot about the wraps a while ago. Uh, my granddaughters, when they come here, they love the wraps. And in a minute, I'm going to ask later our special guest here. But I'm going to turn it over, and don't forget about us here at Pleasant Plains. Now, we'll be closing at 8 tonight, but they open up bright and early at 11 tomorrow. And who knows, you may even see myself and see Bass here. You never know after 11 o'clock who you'll see here. Downtown Ricky Brown has been here, but all the – great athletes at Jackson Christian and coaches eat at Hub City Deli. And we appreciate them, don't we, Coach? Absolutely. And normally end the show with that, but we're thankful for another Tuesday night here and another good meal. And um, their their hospitality for us is tremendous. And um, this is big and huge recognition for our kids and getting them on, on Facebook and in front of our fans Absolutely. and in front of people that not may not be our fans, but just like football in general. So well, like I said, we've made a fan out of Moose Henry all the way in Kingsport, yep. Tennessee. And and, of course, Mo Grimes, and, and there are other people that are listening. The Sticklers in uh, Gatlinburg sometimes listen when they get home early enough from their work. You've got a very special guest, a young man that I, I'm envious of you. You get to introduce a young man that I've known since he was long enough to carry from uh, my index finger to about the bend in my arm, and he was that small once upon a time. But it's all Coach Bullard's now. Uh, he coach and he doesn't need much of an introduction uh, we had him on the show I think it was the first week he was part of our crew and um, you know we've gone with, through a lot of guys being on the show and, and getting them in front of the camera and as we're kind of nearing the end and nearing getting towards the playoffs I wanted to uh, ask coach about bringing Tacker back on just to get a maybe a different perspective than he had week one and you know he we played um, you know nine games I guess eight with one canceled but um, and just to – I told him, I said, we probably want to ask all the other questions that we asked the guests that haven't been on. I said, but we, we'll talk more football. Yeah. And I would love to hear um, him. And, and he, doesn't need, he doesn't need a whole lot. And he, he, this is a guy that – I think you said he had six tackles uh, six the other night. Solos Six solos and maybe. one assist. Correct? I mean, I forgot how many for loss, but it was a very good night. Between you and Chance, uh, we had a total of 15 tackles between the two of you. Yes, sir. And that's what inside linebackers are supposed to do. And way but, Coach, you had the best question tonight. How has things changed the perspective from going into that first week when you were here in the games and stuff to right now we're on the verge of – of the playoffs and folks before I give you the wrong idea we have made the playoffs but we aren't quitting right now what's the perspective in the change through the season so I definitely think we have developed as a team especially defensively um, North Point we gave up like 50 something points the past mm -hmm. three games we've given up like seven points each so defensively I think we've definitely improved as the time has gone and to hit on that um, and Chase this is a, a great nugget from Chase for us and our defense the last three weeks um, have held our opponents under 50 yards rushing a game, and the opponents haven't scored over seven points. And I don't care who you're playing. Um, that's, that's a great stat, and that's something that we, we hang our hat on running the football, and we hang our hat on, on stopping the run and, and forcing the team to, to do something they're uncomfortable with and tack and chance and those guys in the box are the key reasons for that. Um, Absolutely. So. Well, I've got to ask him about a stat. Go ahead. Since you brought those into evidence against FACS, I'm going back a, a week, is that one of the defensive highlights, not of your personal career, but a team? Y'all held FACS to no first downs. Yes, sir. I think it's pretty uh, pretty incredible. They also had – didn't they have negative rushing yards? Negative five, yeah. I believe. Negative five. You're right. I'm really See this young man. Stat. I'm going to put him on oh, my yeah. coaching staff. <laughs> And, uh, folks, he, he's going to uh, actually go in another direction once he gets out of college. He, 
he's going to be in dental school, and then we'll take it from there. But let's let's go back to football, uh, Tacker. The the what's been the high point and the low point so far in this season? And unfortunately, every season has a few lows and. Uh, it can be an individual thing like you thought you had to beat on somebody and missed a tackle, or it could be a team low or a team high because there's been a bunch of team highs this year. Yes, sir. Um, I guess a high would be um, not giving up in our season. You know, we had two losses. We could have easily quit, but we came back fighting. I think that's important. Um, a low. I don't really have a low. Um I mean, I think because he's had a good time. Of, yeah, yeah. and you answered both there by talking yeah. about the losses that we had, and um, I, I enjoy that he he brings up a team thing and yeah. not a not an individual thing. And well, um, there's nothing individual about this young man. Right. He he's team all the way. Because folks, if you don't know, there are times that he and Chance will draw two and three blockers at a time, and I've seen them get held. And uh, I think they've done an outstanding job. And then Wyatt does too. On y'all get held sometimes, and they keep their cool and. Uh, our football team, really, for the most part, that's got to be one of our trademarks, right? Y'all keep you cool and come back and you let the next tackle do you talking for you. Yes, sir. Tack, Tack, tell us about um, your process for getting ready for a game. We play Friday night. We win. You enjoy that one. What do you What do you start doing Saturday, Sunday on your own to start getting ready uh, for the next week, especially as a linebacker, having to break down – Different formations, different motions, different tendencies. How do you uh, prepare for that? Kind of take us through that. Right. So, um, if we win, I completely watch the win uh, and focus on our next opponent. Um, I also watch a little bit of film of our co- like our opponent coming up. Um, usually, that film gets out like Saturday or Sunday, so I watch a little bit of that and go into the week just studying the game plan. I gotta add to Coach mm-hmm. Coach Bullard. Now you see fans why. I think he can host his show. He's got some great questions. What about daily routine? What are some of the daily routines you and the team go through that's going to ensure success? Okay. Um, should I go through, like, my Friday routine? Yeah, just, just yeah, tell that's fine. Yeah, break yeah. It down. So Friday routine, uh, have school, um, come down, work. Get, we don't really – well, we work out, but it's not like a heavy workout. Um, just to activate our muscles, get everything stretched out and stuff like that, go home, uh, eat, come back. Uh, I'm back from about, like, one hour, two hours, and then, you know, get start getting taped, um, start getting stretched out, and then go out to the field. Um, I mean, yeah, it's pretty much my Friday routine. And speaking of taping, because uh, Tacker kind of knows where I'm headed now, uh, how important is it to get taped? <laughs> it's very important. And uh, you learned something about and, uh, about your grandfather today that he was a trainer at the University of Memphis with the football program, and Blake Butler's dad was is Keith Butler, and uh, your grandfather uh, not only taped ankles but he was a full fledged trainer, and uh, getting your ankles taped is important. Isn't it? Yes, sir. Boy, uh, do you have to get wrist or anything? Yes, taped? sir. I get my wrist taped, my ankles taped. Um. And so, so people that think that the coaches just show up to coach and put their coaching shirts on and outfit, the players put their football equipment on, and it's something you can show up an hour before the game and uh, do all that. That's not true. There's more to football. It is a process, and having those routines, like you said, are very important. And um, I understand you've never been late for taping. <laughs> that's, that's an unusual stat, but I do my homework on stuff like that. Tag, what what about playing with with Chance and with with White and Coach? I'm, before I let him answer that, I don't know that there's probably three a linebacking core, three guys that are as smart um, and uh, understand the game plan and understand what the teams are going to do um, like we have, and that that's a luxury to really have. So how do you? Yeah. How before do you like he answers that, guys? can I add one Absolutely. name to it because I feel like it's part of the unit. You, you and Chance especially, y'all been together a long time. Yes, sir. Wyatt, a little younger, but he is added to it. Caleb Newsom, mm-hmm. who really is our – I call him our dog linebacker, yeah. and that's yeah. the name of his position. You, the four of y'all have given me a lot of thrills this year. But go ahead and answer Coach's question and include Caleb in that. So, like you said before, me and Chance have been together since uh, freshman year. Wyatt, this past year, we've really gotten a lot closer. 
uh, and with Caleb too. Um, last year during COVID, you know, uh, me and him just got closer, uh, forming that bond really. And I think with those bonds, if that makes sense, we can trust each other and allow each other to do our jobs. It's all about trust in football. If you don't trust Chance to be there right. and he doesn't trust you and y'all don't trust Caleb to put that, although Caleb, and I, I got to, I'm not teasing him. Caleb, if you're listening, son, I wanted you to intercept that pass. I thought he, <laughs> he had six if he if oh, he yeah. catches it clean and stuff, but he'd done such a good job. And Tiger, have you ever scored a touchdown in your career? Sadly not, Coach. <laughs> Sadly not. But I know you've picked off some. You've picked, gotten some fumbles and, is there anything memorable in your career about that? Um, not that I can recall. Um, oh, last Friday, um, the receiver had it for a second, dropped it, and I thought it was a fumble, so I scooped it and started running. That put it dead. Well, Coach, we need to – you can join in on this yeah. one. When he was a freshman, I worried about his pass coverage, and he knows that. I'm honest with you. This young man can get out there and he can cover. Matter of fact, he covers more territory now than uh, any linebacker I've seen in a while. His pass coverage has become very well, good. Well, you, I mean, you're looking at a guy, and we talk, I hit on this the first time, that was a defensive lineman. Yeah. And Chance was actually a defensive lineman. Yeah, he was two, a – I called him a wild end yeah. one year. <laughs> we had two freshman defensive linemen that, that we knew that that was not going to be their position. Um, and they knew that, but they knew whatever they, they needed to do to help the team at that point. Um, and so tax got a good good experience and and I'll tell this story last year we had kind of messed around with uh, putting him down um, <laughs> at nose guard and, and kind of going five man front kind of a bare front type yeah. Yeah. and tag he did it twice in a row and we weren't calling it but he thought he saw something that triggered that he put himself down I think you had a sack and a tackle for loss yes, on back to back plays so he kind of re- reverted back to his defensive line days and uh, that's something that I'll never forget about Tacker, but um, it, it kind of goes just to, along with he'll play and do whatever we need him to do. And and well, he went in at guard. Um, yeah, I was going to say let's address that. And, He's played some guard. He plays H back, or mm-hmm. uh, I'm not sure that's the terminology that Coach Palmer uses, but he does play H back. Or uh, in the old days, when I had to play against a single wing, that's mm-hmm. a blocking back yeah. spot. He does that. He is capable of. Do you have to tell the official when you're in the backfield or do you just block and we're not going to throw to you? Because he could catch it if we threw right. it to him. I just block. Okay. You and, just, and he was added to the kickoff team this week. And oh, so, we – I mean, he, he played a much he bigger He wouldn't role. be on the right side, would he? I think I think that's where he is. Are you on the right or the left? I can't remember. Right side. But yeah, he's yeah. on the right side that was covering so well um, the other night. So, it, you know, having a senior – if a guard goes down and, and having a senior that you can put out there and keep running the offense um, is a big thing. And, and that's just as big as him uh, making, you know, eight, ten tackles on the other side of the ball. So that he does a lot for us and um, just there are not enough good words to say about him. I want him to share some advice because this young man has come from being a lineman. He's come from not being the fleetest of foot to he's very quick. Uh, I, I joke him about outrunning his dad. That, that's no question about that. What advice can you give? There's a lot of young Jackson Christian School future players are going to hear this. When we archive it tonight, they'll go back to their parents. What can you tell these young people? Listen to Coach Irv. <laughs> he gives out nutritional plans. You follow those nutritional plans. You follow his workouts, and you'll be in good shape. And that, that says a lot, too, because, you know, Tacker has the tools and, and did have the tools. And he just bought into the nutrition and bought into the weight room and bought into, you know, he'll, if you told him to, he had to climb to the top of the field house and, and do a circle before workout, he would have done that. And, and that's just a testament to, to who he is and how he's raised and um, it's paid off for him. You, you know, you'd never know it. How tough is it reading the keys at linebacker? And it, this is a position where there's not just one thing. You got to defend the run. You got to defend the pass. Uh, you're going to get fakes. People are going to run uh, RPO, the run pass option. And and you just don't play. Now he's got good instincts, but how tough is it reading the keys on all this stuff? It's not too bad, if I'm being honest. Um, you just read and react, and. Follow the flow. Absolutely. And um, one of the things that people, when I just got a text I'm, during the thing, 
they want to know when you're going to make your decision. And <laughs> he and I had already talked about that ahead of time. And, folks, all, uh, let me say this to help Tacker out, and he doesn't need help. All good things come with time and patience. So, Tacker, it's your turn to tell them when you're going to sign. Probably sometime in the spring, early spring. He's looking it over. I'm, I'm very proud of this young man. He is making very, very good decisions. And uh, – I just think it's it's a great option. Coach, you got another question? Because you've had some great – Coach, you've been great tonight. Yes, sir, he has. Uh, I don't have anything else for him. Uh, you know, we're just glad he could come back on, and he was happy to do it. Um, I, and I think this is a guy that um, we want our younger guys to look up to, and everybody knows Tacker. And it's awesome that his brother's been able to be out there, even just in our practices and, and being on the sideline, suiting up with him. And that's I know that's a great memory you guys will have. And – um, it just we're going to miss him, and and we're not done by any means. But oh, no. um, you know you are getting towards the end, and um, it's it's a guy that along with Chance and those other seniors that it's been a great group, and we've had a lot of great seniors. Um, so just wanted to bring him back on for you guys. Yeah. Tacker, two things you can remind people of your Bible verse, and I got to get Cooper back over here because uh, that was coach's fault. This coach's fault for forgetting uh, because my notes that I was supposed to have and. Um, Bible verse, remind them of that in your final comment for the people. Yes, sir. My favorite Bible verse is Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Absolutely. Your final thoughts for the people out there. And you better say hello to (laughs) Pop-Pop. Hey, (laughs) Pop-Pop. And Uh, that's a little inside joke right there, but it's not really a joke. That's to a very fine human being. Um, I just want to say uh, thank you for all the support, Uh, fans, everybody. Just thank you all for all the support and uh, keep it up. Now, Coach, I'm going to get Cooper over here, and I'm going to give him my headset, and we're going to let him do his Bible verse, and then I'm going to let you take it into a two-minute break. So, Cooper, here's my headset. So, we we go through our list, and I didn't have the sheets printed out, and Coach was a little bit out of whack today, too. It's a a Tuesday. But, Coop, tell us and tell the listeners what your uh, favorite Bible verse is. Uh, Romans 8.31. Romans 8.31. And – Glad we got him back on, Coach, and glad we got to see Tacker again. And um, we look forward to, to Friday night and playing Fate Academy. And we'll be back with head coach, Coach Palmer, after a two minute break. Hello, I'm Wes Harris with State Farm Insurance. My customers love the fact that they can call me or my team members anytime. So when they're in an accident on the bypass with somebody that doesn't have insurance, or they come out of the grocery store and somebody's backed into their car and has not left a note, or they come home and there's a tree on the roof, or maybe water pouring out their front door. They call a local agent, somebody that they know. So call me, Wes Harris, with State Farm Insurance, located right here on Van Drive in Jackson. Men, there's a new salon in Jackson, Race Clips, on South Highland, next door to Roland Safety and Supply. Whether it's a quick trim or a new look, Race Clips stylists can transform you to perfection. At Race Clips, you'll find all the products to keep you looking your best. Active duty military, veterans, and law enforcement officers receive a discount. Open Monday through Friday from 9 to 6, 9 to 3 on Saturday. Race Clips on South Highland, Jackson. Go to race-clips.com. Football looks fun. I bet I would have been great at it. The first football playing deer, they would have made a movie about me and everything. Probably get Kurt Russell to play me. But alas, me and my dreams run right over again. For fast, reliable collision repair, trust the experts at Mitchell's Body Shop. And get back out there. For surprisingly great rates, contact your local State Farm agent today. If you want the real deal, call State Farm agent Wes Harris in Jackson today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. We are back at Hub City Deli for the final segment of the Jackson Christian Football Recap. Don't forget to come on down to Hub City Deli. Now, again, they close at 8, but they'll be open at 11 tomorrow. Great food here. Uh, you could, 
it'll take you two weeks to get through the craft sandwiches. And that doesn't get, include the salads, the wraps, the featured sandwich, which is a smash burger, the half sandwich with soup or side salad, craft sides. They got half sandwich options. You name it, they got it, and they got some great potato chips over there. And Candace, you did not hear me say I'm <laughs> eating potato chips. Right? She got on to me today. That's Lance Rowland's mom. She's also my nurse practitioner. Coach, before we go to Coach Darby Palmer to learn about our opponent this week, you've got a couple of awards, and actually I think the same young man won both of them. Absolutely. Um, Allison Insurance Group was our game sponsor this week, and we're thankful for them and what they do for our football program and their um, – uh, they were our game sponsor, and the player of the week voted on by the fans on Twitter, uh, Mr. Campbell Scott, and he had 78 yards and two touchdowns. Um, he's also up for the Jackson Sun player of the week, so our, we can go on and vote for that. And I believe that ends Thursday. Um, yeah. Voting ends Thursday for that, and we've had a couple guys win that this year. And can't say enough about Campbell. Uh, he's he's in Tacker's boat as far as hard worker, weight room, all those things, the speed, the stretching, everything that he's done to his body and for his body. Um, and, and we're proud that he was voted on that by the Twitter followers. And I don't want either one of those young men hitting me in a football. <laughs> Listen, they're collisions. I mean, those guys, are, you know, football used to be a contact sport. It's a collision sport now. And those two young men, if they were cars, they'd have a lot of people dented right now. <laughs> he had a run, Coach, that I think he got hit at the line of scrimmage, Campbell did. They squared him up, and it reminded me of Clay Lewis, uh, a running back we had back in the day. Campbell's a little faster than Clay, uh, but when, several steps. When Clay, when Clay got hit, he was always going to fall forward. Yep. And when he got hit, I was like, "Well, they, you know, they stopped us for a loss." But he, I think, he made ten or twelve yards out of it, um, and that just shows the kind of runner and the kind of grit that he has. And uh, we're proud for him to to win this award and also to be up for that award for the Jackson Sun. Well, we have a history of that, like Adam Reagan, who we yeah. mentioned with some of his awards. Uh, Tacker's dad, Nathan, would stroke you pretty hard, too. And, and we've had some others. And even though he was a quarterback, Brian Pearson, who uh, is a dentist, he uh, – Brian went on and played at Lambeth University. And we, we've had a lot of other kids. I can't name them all because you ought to see the sheet, folks, I've got of college football players that this program has turned out. Coach Palmer, Coach Bullard, and the other coaches are going to continue that. We we have kids that can go in and play. We had two that went and played last uh, year on, on football teams this time, and we're going to have some signees this year. Coach, and we'll, both of you can address this, we've got to play an opponent that we've had trouble with off and on. Two years ago, we had to go down to Fayette Academy, and uh, the only reason I believe we lost is the clock ran out. We didn't get beat. The clock ran out before we could beat them. And uh, – uh, people say, well, that's crazy because, no, uh, Fayette Academy and Jackson Christian, you're going to have some hitting. You're going to have some speed out there. Uh, we're a little bit behind them. We're 8-9 and nine in the series. They've been playing football, though, a lot longer than we have, and I do mean a lot longer. Their history, uh, you and I were talking about, all, goes all the way back to the Mississippi Private School League. Matter of fact, they probably started playing their first football games in the 70s, way before we did. Mm -hmm. But. This is an important game. It's a region game. Even though we've got second locked up, we don't lay down any time. Oh, absolutely. And that's been the message all week to, to our team is, is keeping the main thing the main thing. And our guys, we, we actually have a really gr good group of guys that are focused, and they want to go out each week and be great and dominate. And so they've, put, they've been putting in the work this week, and we're excited about it. Oh, absolutely, and I, I want to encourage people. Watch these guys, and, and the coaches at Jackson Christian, oh, he's got a little wrinkle up their sleeve and stuff, and, and I am so proud to be associated with these young men. Coach Bullard, you, you've been through these games with Fayette Academy, and um, it's not going to be easy. No, in, in our first couple of years when we got them back in the region, um, we, we, had some, we took our lumps from them. Uh, and then two years ago, like you said, our guys laid it on the line, and I, I can't believe the final – I don't remember the final. I know it was a one-possession game. Maybe we had a chance to, to go down and tie it at the end and came up short. Um, and then last year it was good to kind of get that monkey off our back and our guys to have some success against them. We know they're going to be physical. We know they're going to be big. We know they're going to have guys that can run the football. Um, Coach Hodum does a great job offensively. You have to defend a million different things. And um, and so we know it's and, – and we I, my message, and I, I shouldn't say mine, our message in, in the position groups this week is we got to peak at the right time, and we're, we're, we want to. We never want to go into the playoffs on a note that on a sour note. And these guys 
today's practice is one of the best practices we've had all year. Uh, Monday's more of a walkthrough type day, and I kind of hit on this every week, but Monday's more of our walkthrough type, schematic type stuff. Tuesday's a big work day. Wednesday we work, and then Thursday we, we do a run through and, and get those guys ready. But, um, you know, this time of year we're, we're trying to get healthy. We're trying to make sure that their bodies are fresh. Um, but you can't, you can't do too much because sometimes you, you relax a little bit and the kids lose focus. But this, is, this group has been tremendous in that aspect. Absolutely. Tempo is very important. It's got to be our tempo, and we want to dictate. And hopefully we get to kick get to receive the kickoff absolutely we practice tempo daily in practice tempo is a big thing for us because we feel like we have more depth than a lot of the teams that we play and so we want to run a lot of plays at a, at a very fast tempo to wear teams down and we've been able to do that a lot this season and we are playing against a coach that has experience playing against us not just there but he spent some years over at tca and we had some uh white knucklers slobber knockers <laughs> and all kinds of <laughs> games like that and uh uh, you know that Michael Hodum wants to come or he wants us to come to his house, but he wants to be because he's a Jacksonian. Mm -hmm. He played at a, another school to be named later in this town, but uh, he did play here, and uh, he's got a lot of Jackson ties, but we are Jackson Christian School, and we're going to come to play Friday night. Absolutely, and that's, and that's been the main message is, is ending the regular season strong as we go into the playoffs, ending on a high note. And our guys have, have echoed that with all the position groups. And we've been able to have one of the best practices of the year this week so far. Well, Coach Bullard, uh, even though you're co-host, you get to have your final word. Then we're going to let Coach Palmer have the ultimate final word tonight on the broadcast. Uh, it was another great night um, at Ronnie Fowler Stadium. Uh, we, our students have been tremendous. Our band's been tremendous. Our fans, uh, we've been packing the end zone and packing the standing room only over there. And seeing the fans, seeing our students celebrating with our players after beating a rival uh, school is something that you just kind of stand back and watch. And it's nothing that we do. It's, it's a program effort. It's a team effort. And um, it was good to get that one Friday. But it's time to move on to Fate Academy. And we hope um, we have a, a good group of fans that travel with us and, and go out on a, on a good note to end the regular season. Absolutely. And before we address it, uh, got to mention this, the competition for the seats in the east end zone, I've never seen anything like it. starts about 7 a.m., yeah. Coach. I you? know. Yeah. Uh, I thought that uh, I came with a friend to put one about eight, and there were already seats yeah. there. And uh, it, it, it's amazing. Jackson Christian, the school, the players, the coaches, the teachers, and the fans are amazing. Coach Darby Palmer, your final word. It was a great win uh, versus TCA last week, but like Coach Bull said, we're moving on to the next week and this week's Fayette, and that's been our main message all week is 100% focus on what we have to do. It's going to be kind of cold, rainy, bring an umbrella, but come root on our boys as we finish this regular season strong. Absolutely. We'll have the game. It'll be on Jackson Christian's Facebook, on the Jackson Christian Booster Club Facebook. Worthy Road Studios will have it on the ball game blitz. It will be on 93.3.1 on radio. And uh, on uh, yeah on radio, but if you want to see it, we've got it. And then Paul Schultz, our wonderful executive producer director, archives all of our games on YouTube. And if you can't get it on Facebook after it's happened, you can always get it there. And it's exciting to watch they, these young men coach an exciting brand of football. The players play, and they uh, there's no 98 percent. They give it all they've got. And coaches. Thank you all for letting me be part of a great program, a fun program, and I truly mean that. And you got a text from me today, and you know that I am not whistling Dixie or whatever you are like the old folks say or chewing a pack of gum when I say that. It's a great place. Come and visit us. Follow us over to Fayette Academy. If you can't be there, we will take the air about 630, uh, give or take a minute or two. And uh, the reason I say that is because uh, when you hook up with Facebook, sometimes it takes a minute or two for Facebook. They're going through some changes, and their people are trying to improve them. But for one of the greatest schools on earth, Jackson Christian School, for Hub City Deli, who we want to thank because every man. week they are tremendous here. We love being here. I want to thank my producer, director, and he probably wears about 15 other hats. Paul Schultz, he, he even sets the cameras up. And for the great coaching staff, we're going to say thanks for your time this time till next time. Good night, all.